We'll be right back. Welcome back to Studio Talk. This is the second segment where we'll be talking about Dujan Whisper Richards. Is he the new Jamaican superstar? What do you think, bro? Um, he's definitely the next Jamaican superstar. I still maintain that assertion. Yeah. And and what makes you say that though? What makes you say that? Um, he he's as I said, the most talented player under 20 in the whole Caribbean. You know, pe- find somebody else and show me people. You know, people have been, been refuting that. Show me somebody else. Show me an next person in the Caribbean that possesses his ability. They don't exist. Um, mm-hmm. He was the best player in schoolboy football this season. And schoolboy football is the highest under 20 competition in the whole entire Caribbean. Need I say any more? So that, that simply proves that he is the best player of age in the whole region. And he has the personality to, 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 to back it. You know, he has a celebrity personality he loves the he loves the the spotlight you know he's a standout player and he's he's made for the moment as i always say my 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 meter to measure to measure people and their their star power is will this person sell shoes that's a question that i always ask will they sell shoes um shoes being anything that can be marketed not necessarily a particular shoe but can they be marketed and I think Dijon Richard is somebody who a brand or many brands can market, which is why I say he's definitely the next Jamaican superstar. Yeah, and I feel like the second point, I've said no one can dispute the talent that we saw. They know he's a talented kid. He's the best Jamaican um, youth player right now. We know that for a fact. Right? I think he's the, 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 the surest youth player to make that a pro right now. With that said, I feel like his second point is the one. Not everybody has that personality. And obviously, we have um, the Clayton Twins, who are superstars in track and field. We have a uh, recently new jumper. His name eludes me at the moment um, for Jamaica, the long jumper. So we have people that have the talent. Yeah. Now, people would argue that the Clayton Twins don't quite have the personality or whatever. But this kid, he has everything. His personality is that of a superstar. Whenever you hear him do, a, do an interview, he speaks like the greats. And you know, I was watching the, the Fix interview, bro. They asked him, what else do you do outside of football? What do you do in your leisure time? You know what the man said? Eat. Eat lunch, sleep. Right? And I'm saying, but I'm sure you're 17 years old. You do something. The man said, we train two times a day, I'm eat, I'm sleep. Right? And, and that's what you get from the superstars. When they think about all of them, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, they speak like there's nothing else outside of their sport. You know, and, and this kid, he has it, man. And, and some other things that he mentioned, you know, he speaks as if he's already there. That is something that we speak about later on in the in the conversation. But he knows that he, he'll make it. He's sure. You know, and, and I like that from him. The personality, um, obviously, he needs some work in terms of um, interviewing skills and media and all of that. But it will come. I'm sure it will come. But in terms of natural pull and people gravitate to the kid, people like it. You know, obviously, a lot of people say that he's hyper or whatever. But he has that pull. And to answer your question, can we sell shoes? I think that's a sure yes. That kid can sell some shoes, definitely with his performance and with his personality. Um, he's good for a sound bite. We know that also well. You know, he's good for a good talk. He's good for a good laugh. And I feel like that sets him up well to be the next Jamaican superstar. And yes, barring injury, I don't see what can stop this kid from being the next Jamaican superstar. He is up next. Um, talk to me about um, the interview, the recent interview that he did. Um, what do you think is the intention behind this interview? Why Why did they do this interview and why not? Um, well, Leon Bailey would have done one recently with Jeffrey. And I think, I think uh, Kirk Butler himself said that he wasn't aware. Hmm. That Leon Bailey did that interview. So I think in this situation he attempted to get ahead of it and do one similar to the Jeffrey, um, to the Jeffrey's with Leon Bailey interview. But this time, obviously, have his fingerprints on that. Craig Butler seems to always want to have his fingerprints on it for better or worse. And I think this time it definitely did. You know, both right there in person as Craig Butler was there alongside him and um the way how the interview went. 
I think this was this was all Craig Butler. The purpose of it, the Leon Bale interview got a lot of notoriety. It made a lot of waves, it got a lot of traction, it did receive a lot of attention. And one thing about Craig Butler, for better or for worse, he's going to want to attract attention to him and his players. You know, some might say that's a good thing because that 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 helps with advertising, that helps with branding. Some might say it's a bad thing because it's it adds undue pressure and it makes his players public enemy number one. But I think all in all, Craig Butler just saw this as an opportunity to get the John Richards out there to continue to, to continue to beat the drum that the John Richards is the best and is next up. And this was just another opportunity for him to do it in a controlled manner. So that's I, that's what I think the purpose of this interview was. Yeah, and I watched the interview. I agree with you, by the way. I think that is the intention. And in fact, we'll take a a, a, a segment of Ryan's interview of Oda Richards, Rich Whisper's father, and his from his perspective what this interview was about. But first, before you even do that, I watched the interview. The way it started was kind of shaky. I didn't like the way it started. The things that they were saying, the questions that were asked, I didn't really like. And instead, if I had played for Mona, they would have won money. Some things that you're just not supposed to say as an athlete, you know, or you know, it's not politically correct. You're not supposed to say. Oh, but even as a Kingston, to hear. Kingston College student, this young church is still exactly. Our church is still a student at Kingston College until July, until June when he do his CSEC exam because he's a grade eleven student. Like as a KC baller, like, why would I ever think of play for Mona? Like as a KC baller, you know, it's not Phoenix. Like if me play for Mona, you like me, yeah. I'm a KC baller. Yeah. You know, so, yeah if, so if Craig was if Craig was at JC, when I say if me ever play for JC or if Craig was at Calabar, if me play for Calabar, no, like me a KC man. If yeah. me play for KC, cause it's just KC. My my club is Phoenix, and and you get me saying. Like for example, Nashada Gibbs, he plays for Kingston, Kingston Football Club. That's that's the club that he's associated with. Um currently a member of the under 17 squad right now, somebody to look out for. You'd never hear a statement like, oh, if I had played for Campion, my team would have been more successful, right? Or if, if Nashada Gibbs played for Campion, Campion would have been way better, trust and believe that. But like, that's not something that I'm sure that's not even in Nashada Gibbs' head. Like yeah. I'm sure he disassociates Kingston Football Academy with Campion College. I, I I'm sure that there's a massive split. Yes, he goes there, and probably 14 people on that team when he plays his club football or his academy football. 14 14 of those players play for Campion College. However, when he's there, and though he might be wearing red, he's not wearing Campion's colors because Nashada gives his purple at his very core right so i'm sure i'm sure he separates his club football from his from his um high school football and for sixth form not surely he's not going to campion college not at all. Uh, next next year we'll be seeing him at kingston college and yeah. i can also i'm pretty assured that next year he'll also be still playing for kingston football academy right mm-hmm. so, and i think the way they the way the way how he disassociates the two is exactly how it's supposed to be disassociated like we, they said Whisper won't be here next year. Um, I hope he's not, and I don't think he will. But if he is, you'll have to go to school. He'll and definitely be going to Kingston College. I feel his father's a KC man. Yeah, he'll, he'll be there. But I feel like this was just a kid speaking. And yeah, the point based, that... based on that sentiment he shared, could we see the giant chess in the Mona High Six form? I don't think so. I honestly don't believe so. And 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 the point I was making though, the, the first part of the interview rubbed me the wrong way, saying that the Manning Cup was just like practice monkeys and blah blah blah. Right, which I understand where they're coming from, because Craig Butler said it. He said it before, even on our program. He said that we're just using this as practice. The end goal is to is professional football. Nobody, no one cares about school football. Blah blah blah. In fact, prior to last year, last year's Manning Cup season, Craig Butler has been on a rant about school boy football. He hated it. He hated the idea of school boy football. You know, so I understand where they're coming from. But the first part of the interview was so shaky. I didn't like the answer. I didn't like the questions. But towards the middle, towards the end, I feel like it was a good conversation. It was, you know, some very good topics they touched on. Um, his love for football came out. You know, his, his love for his coach came out. How much he listens to his coach came out. You know, a lot of things came out in the interview, and I feel like it, it did well. And I feel like there are a lot of positives that were taken from from that interview. It did well. Whatever the objective was when they went to the fix, I feel like that it was achieved. And it, I feel like it was to to help the celebrity of whisper. It was to make more people know the kid and love the kid. And I feel like that probably, no, I feel like it definitely helped them in that cause. Now, 
before we continue the discussion, let's see what his father had to say um, about the interview. Um, what was the purpose of the interview? What was the purpose of the interview? You know that um, Craig is his agent and he is his marketer. So I think he used that as a marketing strategy. All right. So on the Ryan LFC show, big up Ryan LFC, by the way. You know, definitely someone that we have a good relationship with in the YouTube space. Um, JT was on the show and he called in and asked, what was the point of this interview? And what I said is straight up. Craig Butler is his agent. He used this as a marketing strategy. They are clearly playing into the celebrity and whisper. I have no problems with it. Um, them doing it so early though, how do you feel about that? He isn't, he isn't signing it, he's still a schoolboy, just after the money cup, that's the only thing that we've seen. Um, is it a bit too early to be doing this? Um, no, it's never, it's never too early to build their brand. It's never too early to build their brand. Um, as long as, as long as the player on the field continues to do what he needs to do, then it's all, it's all good for me. You know, players start selling shoes at this point, at this time. You know, they're by next year. Um, I think he's born in September. He should be signing a Nike contract, mm. and he should be, he should be now paid to endure shoes. So the, 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 the bigger his brand is from now. The bigger that 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 um, sponsorship deal will be, so I have no issue with building building the brand. But one thing that we need to always remember, and I don't think this is a problem for the genre chat. One thing that we need to remember is that what builds the brand most of all is what's done on the on the football field. Mm -hmm. And I think you know once we continue to see Whisper play football, once we can once he continues to improve, um, he'll be fine. I have no problem with building. A brand from this point on you know we speak about um the ball brothers lonzo lamello and liangelo two of whom are nba stars at this point in time you know one a bigger star than the other um one a solid point guard that's lonzo solid point guard um a good role player a definite starter in the nba and somebody who can contribute to winning basketball and lamello the other one a standout, like a star in this league, you know, he's going to be, he's going to be an all-star again for the second consecutive year. And you think about his brand, Lamella Ball's brand, that's a brand that has been building since he was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's had a brand, he's had his own brand, um, scoring, what is it, 92 points in a game, pulling up from half court, wearing his hairstyle and his father coming out and saying that he's, He's the best one out there. He's he's as good as 19 year old son and so forth. And that has that has benefited him off the court, allowing him to be able to sign a massive Puma contract like right off the bat because of the the, the because of the, the the branding machine that he would have had come into the, the league with. And once his basketball back it up on the court, currently averaging around 23 points in the NBA at 21 years old like once you're doing that that much the branding would have only consolidated and helped your point so i have no problem building his brand from now you know why not start from early why not get his face out there why not let people know him we've been doing our part you know and craig is the agent so he's also supposed to be doing his part as well once the football continues to football then this will only be uh, this will only benefit him can't hurt can't hurt anyone. for sure and i agree the, the one thing that I'd say is I hope the kid just continues to work and I don't think, as I said, I don't think this, you know, Whisper is one that doesn't work and I don't know, I've probably seen him train once. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know for sure, but if I had something to tell him, you have the star power, bro, you have the talent. Just keep working hard, keep it down and work hard. Um, obviously, as I said before, need a training, need that. You know, you know, if he's going to be a star and he's going to get better. I would think about the Liam Bailey's out there, bro. Interviewing was never what you saying both. You saying both. Interviewing when they just started their careers are as cool boys. It wasn't their stuck their strong point. But look at them now, bro. You see, when I have an interview with Liam Bailey, you're going to get a great conversation. Taylor, Christopher Taylor. Taylor. You saying both. When you have a conversation with them, no, it's a great, it's a great interview. Yeah. So, which is on the same boy. I don't think much people are are 
you know, at the, at the start of the Money Cup, they were kind of, they were borderline, borderline bullying the kid. They were never in an interview, but no, he's obviously getting better. I've yeah. seen him on Sports Max, I've yeah. seen, seen him on Talk of Youth. I've seen even on this interview, he was clear in the things that he, want, he wanted to say. Um, but obviously, need some work. In terms of the, the celebrity of this kid, I hope it continues to grow. I hope he, he makes it as a, as a superstar, as a Jamaican superstar. And, and he has, confidence that Whisper will be playing in the black, green, and gold very soon. He has, he has all the elements. He's a well dressed individual, you know, carries himself very well. He comports himself in a, in a, in a classy manner for the most part. He knows how to have fun, but you, you'll never see him doing anything ridiculous, anything stupid. That's not the type of thing he's, you know, on the field, he, he's cocky and arrogant. But he's not violent. Like you won't see the genre as we get in red cards. And trust me, he's been hit and he's been taunted and he's been bullied so much on the on the field and his response to that is scoring goals. That's he more than scoring goals, he plays into it. We see him, we see yeah, him jeering players. That's literally his response to, 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 to the abuse that he gets. Like he's not the type of player that will because we've seen teams frustrate him. We saw him extremely frustrated against Jose Marty. And the way he handled that with such class and grace. You know, coming and doing a solid interview afterwards, I think after that was the match game, he was so clearly frustrated him. And all of this is why this this temperament that he has on the field, amazing temperament. He's like, you know, some would say a gentle giant, but he's aggressive enough to, to assert himself on the field. But I don't see Whisper throwing a punch. I don't see Whisper going out and getting into bar fights because he's led so well by Adal Richards, who is like a disciplinarian and a very good man. Like we've spoke, we've spoken to him on many occasions. And and he's he's guided by other stars like Leon Bailey, so on and so forth. I think he has everything in the making to become the next star. Once his football stays where it is, if he maintains his personality, you know, uh, maintains his sense of fashion, maintains his sense of, sense of style, maintains his temperament, he'll be a-okay. Yeah, and, and that final point that you made about his father, I think that has a lot to do with, you know, where he is right now and, and even where he's going to go, the places that he's going. I feel like his father is a big, you know, a big factor in what Whisper is doing. You know, I watched the interview with Ryan and he said that he knew that his kid had something special, but he didn't quite know how to get him out there. And he saw what um, Javi Simmons' father did. Um, that's the, the, the Dutch player. Yeah, that's he, he's been a superstar all his life, by the way. All his life, from he was a kid. Um, he saw that, and what Javi Simmons' father did was to record his every play, record everything he did, posted it, built up the celebrity. Similar to what we're seeing with Whisper right now, and he's following that playbook. So, so kudos and, and much props goes to Odile Richards because what? He's standing out in the area of easy, recent World Cup call up, you know, started out at Barcelona, then PSG, and it's rumored that he will be returning to PSG. That same Javi Simmons right there, you know, still but only a young child representing yeah. his nation at the World Cup. And if that's if there's a, a, if there's any model that somebody should follow, I think that's definitely one to follow for sure. There we go. Um, people, anything you want to say to me, so put in the comment section, the man. Probably see it, who knows. Um, your opinions on the topic, though. Why did Whisper do this interview? Do you like the interview? You like the look at the interview, the aftermath? Do you like it? Is Whisper the next Jamaican superstar? Is he? Answer that question for us in the live chat and in the comment section, please. Good cut, conversation, bro. We give them four to five minutes. Cut, uh, cut, cut one more time. I will come back and we'll get them a review. You get me, I say? So yeah, right. people, um, that was the, the two discussions. We are going to take one last slight break, come back with a recap, send it off. Almost on. All right, there we go. People, it's Studio Talk. I'll be right back. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And let's do a quick recap of the show today. We started the show off talking about the under-17 camp and a couple of players, a couple of Phoenix players that were selected, but opted to go to Europe at the end of the month instead of representing Jamaica. One of us liked the move. One of us don't necessarily... One of us don't like the move. And one of us don't necessarily have a problem with it, people. How do you feel about that move from the Phoenix players? Did this affect um, Craig Butler and his, you know, credibility and... and, and what he's been calling for the JFF to embrace his players. Will this affect anything? Uh, will the JFF say that? See, we call the players and come. 
is this something that JFF will say? We don't know. Tell us in the comment section, people. We also spoke about this phenomenon. I definitely say a phenomenon. We don't see this every year. Whisper, is he the next Jamaican superstar? He recently did an interview with the Fix. Um, where a lot of people had a lot of things to say, and we definitely gave our two cents. What do you have to say about this? Let us know in the live chat in the comment section, bro. What else you have to say to the people? Um, yeah, yeah, as it relates to, to, to the first topic that you, you spoke about, you know, I'd love to see Liquor 10. You know, they're probably number 10. You know, I can't wait to see the number allocations for this. Yeah, I'm so excited about this under 17. This under 17 World Cup qualifying competition. But yeah, disappointed that the players won't be there. You know, what else can I say? Phoenix organization is a massive one, you know, including the likes of Dijon Richard, Daniel Mitchell, um, <clears throat> Akeem Bernard. Yes, yeah, so, so there, there will be a, a huge complement of players who are 17 and 18 years old who definitely need this a bit more than Denzel Washington McKenzie. I'm not saying that he's too young, but I'm saying that the tour, there's always going to be a next tour. There will never be a next under 17 World Cup for him or a next under 17 World Cup qualifying competition for him, which mm -hmm. is why I would have hoped that he would have chosen to go there. Like the likes of Carlton. Brown and, and Dylan John, Jamani Bell, you know, hopefully those guys all make the final cut, ex especially Carlton Brown, you know, I think he'll be the one fighting the hardest out of those Phoenix players to make it into the squad. I'd love to see him, him make it there. Um, but all in all, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy for the opportunity that Craig Butler is providing for these boys, don't get me wrong, you know, and he needs to keep on doing it. And... Whether or not I like the fact that he's providing these opportunities, people. Whether or not you like the fact that he's providing these opportunities. Kerbola will continue to provide these opportunities for these children. You know, uh, the likes of Deshaun Richards and Akeem Bernard, as you said, they can go. I would hope that all the players eligible to play for the country would have stayed. Because the nation has to take priority. Unfortunately, that's not the case. But that gone, good luck to the man them on them tour. Definitely hope them get a contract. Definitely looking forward to see them in the next under 20 cycle. As it relates to Whisper, he's the next player that still has under 20 age. So who knows? Next under 20 cycle, you might see Denzel Washington McKenzie and Dijon Richards finally being included. Maybe Whisper captain in that team. Finally yeah. leading us to the World Cup and, and giving his nation success. I think there's a lot to look forward to from these two players. I think Denzel McKenzie, the first. Um, the the player we featured in the first and Dijon Richards, the player we featured in the second. Um, continue doing those interviews, continue getting your face out there, continue building your brand because on your 18th birthday, I assume you'll be signing for Nike. I, I'm pretty sure we'll probably be going live. I feel like something big is coming this year, man. Yeah, even even other said on Ryan show that listen, he was on a little minute right by the way. He was saying, Yo, people, this is not how football works. We, who knows? We probably signed something already, but we can't come to yeah, 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 yeah. wait until 18. You know, so who knows? Maybe the kid is already signed, and maybe this is why we're seeing this media push from them. Yeah, at, so that's exactly so. At 18, when, when, when Nike comes with all that money, these interviews is going to determine how much all that money is going to be. So continue doing these interviews. I whisper off the field, continue being whisper, continue working hard, continue live your best life, but not too good of a life yet until they reach a level. But besides that, bro, another good episode of Steel the Talk. Yeah, we need Whisper on the show. We need other Richards on the show. Probably get Craig Butler again. Um, this will be the year of Whisper. Hopefully, he's the next Jamaican superstar, people. Hopefully. Not we need him on the show. If you would like... He's the next Jamaican superstar. It's there you go. Joe Mar said definitively. If you like today's episode of Steel the Talk, don't forget to like the video. Who else yeah. did I pick? Chris Taylor. It's not too late for Chris Taylor. Yeah, they're pretty Chris Taylor still. It's a Chris Taylor is like LeBron James and, and the people. It's not, too, it's not too late for Chris Taylor. I said Chris Taylor is the next superstar. I think Chris Taylor will emerge and then Dejan Richards. I still, I still believe in Chris Taylor. Make us see. Make us see. I'm going with Dejan Richards. <laughs> yeah, people also leave a comment on the video and subscribe to the side at Sports TV. One more thing though. Not the Chris Taylor from Sportsmax. I mean Christopher Taylor, former Calabar athlete. 400 meter hurdle, the best 400 meter, 400 meter sprinter, 200 yeah. meter, the best the nation has ever seen at schoolboy level. Yes, better than you saying, but believe me when I tell the people, Chris Taylor got next. Don't worry about it. I call it then and it will come to fruition. Anyways, share the video to at least 10 people and ensure to get us just six subscribers. 
because if each and every one of you guys can manage to do that, you know, many subscribers that get us by the end of the day, people. There we go. A lot for now, people. This was this other sports TV. Is that it? Another episode of Studio Talk. Yeah, yeah. We're out. Play the music. There we go. <laughs>